chapter 11, integration. So first of all, I put four exercises together. This is talking about the rules. So what is integral? Okay, so what is anti-differentiation? So we have fx. Okay, we have fx. And we're trying to make diff, diff that. We make it f dash x. Now we go anti-diff. So we will make from f dash x back to fx. This is the first meaning for integration. We will learn the second meaning later. That's the first thing we can use for anti-diff. So we have differentiation to make fx into the gradient function. Now we have the gradient function, how we can get it back to the original fx function. So that's the first thing we talk about. That's the first meaning for integration. So anti-differentiation or simply uh, integration is the process of determining a function that has a, no, uh, has a known derivative. Okay, it is the opposite process to differentiation. We use this, you know, like for diff, we have the d dx thing to diff something, that's the differentiation. So for integration, we have this sign here, the integration sign. Okay, so we integral dx. Okay, they are together. So we still need to say, is anti-diff relate to which variable? Okay, what is the variable? If you have, for example, ax squared, is a the variable or x is the variable? If we say a is the variable, we say dA. The x squared is a constant. Okay, we treat x squared as a constant. If we say dx, then a is the constant, then x squared is the variable. So x is the variable. So the, this place can change, okay? Change to different letters you treat as a variable, like what is changing? So this is the sign. So find <coughs> fx from the f dash x. So basically it's anti diff f dash x of dx that will give you fx. So it's the opposite process. If we want to integrate f dash x, we have to write this. Okay, it is called Okay, it is called an indefinite integral. Okay, we'll talk about definite integral later. This is called indefinite integral. So you know it's an opposite process. Then let's talk about this. Okay, I just open a new page. It's quite a little space here. So okay, we have, for example, let's do the easiest thing. We have x to the power of n. Okay, fx equals to x to the power of n. Then what well, to find f dash x? We will go, step number one is times n, right? We times the n, drag the n to the front, we times n. And the second step is reduce the power by one. Okay, we minus one. So we have n times x to the power of n minus one. But be careful with the order. What is the order? Order is we times n first and then reduce the power by one. Now what we want to go back, okay? So um, from f dash x to fx, what's the reverse step we need to do, okay? We do something first and second and then want to recover it we will start from step two and then go back to step one. So we will increase the power by one. And second is divide n. Divide the new power. Okay, what is the new power? Is the power increased by one already? Okay, think about that. We've First of all, drag the power down. Okay, this is a larger number, for example, four. And then we reduce the power by one. The power becomes three. Okay, the power becomes three. Now we need to recover the power and get rid of the constant new times before. So we need to increase the power by one and then divide the increased power. So the power was three and then increased by one become four. And now we need to divide four because originally we times four. We, we are not times three, we times four. So it is reverse, opposite process. So we go step one, step two. Now we need to go back. So step two first and then go back to step one. So that is when we have f dash x 
equals to x to the power of n. Okay, our derivative function equals to x to the power of n. Then fx will be what? fx will be we increase the power by one first, and then we divide by the new power, the increased power. Okay, originally times a larger power. Now we need to make the smaller. Uh, power back to the larger one and then divide by the larger number. So that is the simplest rule, like the first rule for um, x to the power of n to do the antidiff. Okay, x to the power of n to do the antidiff. So if we look at this, okay, that's this one. Okay, that's this one. You can have a look at this chart. Everything got a plus c. Okay, everything got a plus c. Well, I'm not going to circle all of it. I'll talk about what is c. So, if we have if we have f x equals to x power of two, g x equals to x power of two plus one, uh, h x equals to x power of two minus two. Okay, we find the derivative for all of that. So f dash x will be two x. G dash x equals to x, h dash x equals to x. They all have the same derivative. Okay, for one function, you will have a unique differentiation function, like the gradient function. You have a unique differentiation differentiation function. But see, all the two x, two x can go back to this, go this, go this, can even go something else. So it's not unique. Okay, so what is the thing I can't decide is the constant. Okay, I'm not sure whether we have a constant originally. Okay, so I'm not sure because it doesn't matter what c value I plus originally. If that, it all becomes zero. Okay, it all becomes zero. So we don't have that. Okay, we don't have that. So what we will have is only the thing involve x. Okay, it's only original thing involve x. The constant I can't decide. That's why when we anti diff to x of dx, well, think about the process. I will increase the power by one, so that's a power of two now. And then I will divide the power. So the two is a constant. We don't need to care about the constant. We keep the constant there. So we divide by two. But I don't know whether there will be a constant or not. Like it can be plus one, can be plus two, can be plus five even, because when you diff it, all becomes zero. O will give you a function of two x as the gradient function. So now my original function fx, will be x squared plus c. Okay, it will be x squared plus c. So you must write the c value here. So it's, a, it's called an indefinite integral because I'm not sure what is it. So I will put the c value there. Um, okay, so it depends on how the question asks you. Okay, how the question asks you. If the question required to find the antiderivative of the f dash x function, we need to include the c. Okay, it's d antiderivative because it got all the possibilities. C can be anything, any real number, says the c. But if the question just said find an antiderivative for f dash x, an antiderivative, anything will be fine. You plus a zero, you plus one, plus two, it will be all good. Like you can just go for without the c because say we treat c as zero. So there's no constant. Okay, I just give one function satisfied. Okay, I give one function satisfied. So it's called an antiderivative. For example, I said find an antiderivative for 2x. Okay, it's the one we did. So an antiderivative. So I can say that's just x squared without adding anything because it's satisfied. That's one of the solution. Or if you want, I can add 100 at the back. That's still an antiderivative. Okay, that's still an antiderivative. It's still possible. It's still true. When we different, still give you two x. So that's the difference when they, how they ask you, an antiderivative or the antiderivative. The antiderivative include everything, but an is just one of that. Okay, so go back to this table. Okay, we have talked about x to the power of n. Why x to the power of n? I need to increase the power by one and then divide n. Okay, and then divide n plus one. So divide by n plus one. 
be careful with something okay these two are basically the same thing because i don't need to care about the constant the constant a can just be dragged out and then do the anti-derivative because when we do differentiation the constant we don't need to care about the constant we just div the thing with x and then times the a back so same as anti-derivative anti but something very very important is n can't be negative one okay n can't be negative one when a n is negative one so for example i ask you to anti diff x to the power of minus one or four x to the power of minus one doesn't matter i can't use this rule to do it why i can't use this rule to do it if i increase the power by one that becomes a zero right and then i would divide by zero and define okay and define i can't use this rule to talk about n equals to negative one this will be a log okay i'll talk about log log is the most difficult one i feel log is the most difficult one i'll talk about log later but that's why n equals to minus one doesn't work you can't use the same method to find the antiderivative for x to the power of minus one okay x to the power of minus one that doesn't work so that's this one here um okay have talked about the first two and the third one third one is pretty much the same that's the combination when we have gx when we have gx so it's ax plus b to the power of n okay ax plus b to the power of n when n is not equals to n still can't be minus one if we talk about a power function okay a power function with some power x to the power of something this power can't be negative one okay doesn't matter what the form looks like if it's a power function n can't be minus one so let's talk about if fx okay if fx equals to ax plus b to the power of n let's think about what we have done to find the derivative to find the derivative the first step is times n okay drag the power into the front okay the second thing is times a which is the coefficient the derivative of the inner function right we derive the inner function which is a we times a and step number three is reduce the power by one okay so what we have is n times a times ax plus b to the power of n minus one okay that's what we do derivative okay so n first and then derive the inner function and then reduce the power by one so that is when we diff it so when we anti diff it so if we have f dash x equals to x plus b to the power of n the first step i need to do well go backwards from step number three go backwards step number one will be increase the power by one Okay, second step will be divide A. And then the third step will be divide by n plus 1 because it's the new power. Okay, originally times the larger power. Now you need to divide the larger power. So what's the rule becomes? What the rule will become is we increase the power first okay we increase the power first and then we divide the coefficient of x is the inner function's coefficient and then we need to divide by the larger power which is divided by n plus one so that's how we have this rule here okay that's how we have this rule it's pretty much the same as x to the power of n increase the power divide by the power but the extra thing we'll have is divide by a as well okay we need to divide by a as well because originally we have times the a we have times the a now we need to divide the a okay we need to divide the a so that's the first three okay that's the first three they are the same thing okay they are the same thing so they they are the power function um, 
Okay, these three are the power function. Okay, so we'll talk about power functions. Okay, the, la the, the first one is very simple. The first one is A. A is a real constant. A. Okay, it's just A, a it's 3. So we'll have 3x and then plus C. Okay, 3 will di directly become 3x because when you div things, div a linear, you have a constant. So constant will go back to a linear. So 3 will go back to 3x and then remember the plus C. Okay, remember the plus C. Okay, so that is the power function. Now let's talk about exponential. Okay, let's talk about exponential. Think about exponential. If we have fx, okay, that's the next one. If we have fx equals to e ax plus b. Think about the derivative. First step will be times by a. Yeah? And next steps still have the same thing. Yeah, still have the same thing. Now what you need to do for anti-diff? If f dash x equals to e x plus b. So first thing is divide by a. Done. Okay, exponential is really simple. Because when we diff exponential, diff the top times the top, that's it. Okay, finish. It's more quite like um, power functions. So we do something to the power. Diff the power times into the front, done. Okay, that's it. So integral of e x plus b, dx, uh, b is plus on the top, dx is just 1 over a times the same thing, plus c. Okay, remember the plus c. Tell yourself plus c, plus c, plus c, plus c, okay? Just keep telling yourself plus c values. So it's just 1 over a and times the same thing. Okay, exponential is quite, quite easy. Now let's talk about circular functions. Well, we have fx equals to sine ax plus b. We only talk about linear. The in inside function never become uh, quadratic, qu cubic, something like that. It's always linear. Say so fx equals to that, gx equals to cosine ax plus b. And hx equals to tangent ax plus b. Let's talk about those three together. Okay, the first step is always times a. Okay, the first step for all of this will be derive the inner function, which is times a. Okay, it's all times by a. Okay, second step. Second step is what? Sine will change to cos. Okay, sine will change to cos. So the f dash x is a times cos ax plus b. The second step for cosine is cosine will change to minus sign. Okay, cosine will change to minus sign. So f dash x equals to a minus, well, I would say that is a times minus sign x plus b. And for tangent, will change to sec squared. Okay, so uh, that's g dash x and h dash x is a times second squared ax plus b. Okay, that's the derivative. Okay, that's the derivative. Okay, we all times a. And then sign change to cos. Cos to negative sign and tangle second square. Tan is the easiest one, okay? Tan is the easiest one. Why tan is easiest? It's just sec and tan directly change to each other. So when we do anti-diff, if I have sine x plus b, 
t dash x equals to cosine x plus b and h x h dash x equals to sec squared x plus b okay so let's start from the sec square sec square is the easiest one because h x will well first step is change sec back to 10 so you have a 10 ax plus b okay 10 change to sec and sec will go back to 10 and i have times a now i need to divide by a okay divide by a so plus c so it's 1 over a 10 ax plus b plus c okay sec is the easiest one to talk about Now the sine and cosine is really confusing. We need to try to remember that. Think about the diff. Diff is sine back to cos. Okay, sine give you cos. Now cos will go back to sine, right? Cos will directly go back to sine. Sine to cos, then go backwards. Cos will go back to sine. So for this one, the gx will be cos directly go back to sine. And I, I need to divide the a value. Okay, directly go back to cos will go back to sine. Okay, it's the backwards. Sine give you cos, then cos will give you sine when you do anti diff. But the sine one is confusing. When you do anti diff, uh, diff, cos give you minus sine. Okay, cos give you minus sine. Then minus sine will give you cos. Right? Minus sine will give you cos. Then Sine will give you minus cos. Okay, sine will give you minus cos. So for this one, it's the very confusing one. So that will change to a minus cos of a. Okay, and then plus c value at the back. So why I say sine cosine is confusing? Because when you diff it, sine will go to directly go cos. But when you do anti diff, sine will go to negative cos. And that's some sometimes students always forget. So I think that's the most important part for circular functions. So circular function is not e as easy as exponential, but it's still we divide the a value, we divide the a value, and then we go sine to negative cos, cos to positive sine, second square to tangent. Okay, second square to tangent, cos to sine, and sine to negative cos. Okay, so that's how we do anti diff for circular functions. All right, the last one I will talk about is the log. Okay, it's the log. Okay. If you feel my method is hard, you can just remember the formula. The formula is not that hard to memorize, but I want to reason it to you why it's like this. Okay, why it's like this. Um, think about fx equals to log e a x plus b. What's the derivative looks like? I'm not talking about step one, step two. Like, what's the derivative looks like? What's the derivative for this? A over, yeah, ax plus b. Okay, so a over a linear. Okay, can you see the coefficient? That's the g dash x. That's the gx. Okay, that's the g dash x and that's the gx. Um, so you can see log is not going to diff to a log. Log looks different. Okay, it's not like exponential is still exponential, uh, power function is still power function, circular function is still circular function. Log is totally changed to another function. And also that's why the power of minus one doesn't work. Because power of minus one, that's ax plus b to the power of minus one. That belongs to log. Okay, that gives you log. So now let's think about this. We anti diff this. will give you a log e x plus b okay i'll talk about notation later okay i'll talk about notation later so let's just think about that that's true okay with this log give you this and anti diff this will give you back to log now i want to anti diff one over a x plus b yes can i want to anti diff that 
I know that something looks like a log, okay? Because it's part of minus one, I know that something similar to log. But I don't know what kind of log it belongs to. So I know if I have this, I will have log. But I can't just create a, va a value there. I, can I can't just create a, va a value there. So what I can do is I can divide a value. Or, or if you like, I can say this. Okay, that's still the same thing. Okay, that's still the same thing. But what's the good thing is, I know what's the entity for that. Because that's a g that's x over gx. That's a log. And I have a coefficient 1 over a. That's a coefficient. That's a number. I don't need to care about that. So this will directly give me 1 over a log e ax plus b. And plus b. Okay, that's why you have a 1 over a there. 1 over a is something you create out. Because you want to make the thing, this thing, to look like a log. Okay, to be the entity of a log. So for example, let's do an example. Integral of 2 over 3x plus 1 dx. Okay, I know that must be the log because it's a linear at the bottom and it's a linear to the power of minus 1. I know, first of all, I need to know what I'm aiming to. Okay, I'm aiming for, I'm aiming for a log function. So, well, the two is quite unnecessary, okay? The two is, doesn't help that much. So I can leave the two there. And it's a one over three X plus one. I want a log. I know the bottom is GX. Then the G dash X is a three. So I will put a three on top, but I can't just put a three on top. I will also divide the three to make it balance, okay? To make it still the same thing. You see the 3 and 3 will get cancelled and the 2 over 3x plus 1 is original function. It's exactly the same. Okay, but this will give you 2 over 3. That's a coefficient. Log e of 3x plus 1. And plus c. Okay, 3x plus 1 and then plus c. That's how we do log. But if you don't like this method, you can just remember the formula. Okay, you can just remember the formula. It's just basically divide by the coefficient of the bottom. Okay, divide the coefficient of the bottom. But this one is thinking why. Okay, so why are we doing this? So it's 2 over 3 log e 3x plus 1 plus c. Okay, now there's one more thing I need to fix. That's why I said I don't like log. Because we get rid of the absolute value from method calls. Okay, unit 3, 4 method, we don't talk about absolute value anymore. But this place required you to put absolute sign instead of this bracket. You don't need to understand what is it because it will be a full two lessons to explain what's the absolute value. But that's just remember when you go back to log, the small bracket, change it to two straight lines. Okay, change it to two straight lines. That's called the absolute value. So we're not talking about absolute value anymore, but we still require this notation for log here. So put the absolute sign there. So it's the absolute log e, two straight lines, three x plus one. So just change the bracket to absolute. Okay, well just briefly talk about what's absolute because we'll use it later for something quick. Um, absolute is just change all the negative number to positive. For example, you put negative two inside, that will just give you a two. Okay, change all the positive, negative to positive. That's all that sign absolute, uh, how the absolute sign works. Okay, if you put a positive three in it, that will still be a positive three. So it will do nothing to positive numbers, but it will change negative to positive. Okay, it will change negative to positive. Okay, back to here. That's why we have the absolute sign here. See the absolute? That's the absolute sign here. Okay, that's all the rules we'll have. If you can remember today, that would be really great. But I think you will forget. It's all right, we'll have like three weeks to work on this. So you will remember in three weeks' time. Um, your next um, set will definitely focus on integrations. So it's a very important topic. Um, 
Okay, absolute signs for log. Okay, so what we have, a constant will go to ax. Power functions, exponential, logarithm, circular functions. Okay, that's all the rules we use only in this chapter. Now, let's go to next page. Well, I know I'm not going to finish today. I've just today introduced all the rules to you. That's basically everything for, for the antiderivative. Okay, so now we have two pages to do antidiv. I'm not going to go through all of it. I will just go through the first two and then give you the rest of the time for you to think about the rule and work by yourself. I just go for introductions basically. Okay, for this one, for the first one, I have 3x minus 5 plus 2 over 3x cubed. So they are all power functions. Okay, they are all power functions. There's no exponential, no circular function, no one over a linear. There's no uh, um, exponential. So that's just the power, uh, power functions. So let's make that equals to 3x to the power of 1. Remember, you always recover the power first. Okay, power will from 1 back to 2. And then we divide the power, the larger power, which is divided by 2. Minus 5 is just a 5x. Okay, constant back to linear is a 5x. And plus 2 over 3. Well, don't, care, don't need to care about the constant. Put it there. x to the power of 3 will go back to 4. And then we divide by 4. And the most important thing is plus C. Okay, plus C. Always needs to write plus C. Okay, plus, unless it's asking you an antiderivative. An antiderivative. So I can simplify that a little bit. That's 3x plus 2 minus 5x. And that is, that's a 2 plus 1 on 6x to the power 4. Plus C. What's the method to check? Diff that. Okay, so you diff your answer to see if you have the things inside. So diff that, that's a 3x. Okay, we'll get it. Diff minus 5x, that's minus 5, that's good. That's a 4 on 6x to the power of 3. 4 on 6 is 2 on 3, so we get it. So that's how we can check it. Okay, that's how we can check it. That's the power function. Let's have a look at the next one. What's the next one will be? What rule will go back to? Log. Okay, good. I recognize that's a log. Because if we make into the power function, that's a power of minus one. That's not nice enough. Okay, that's minus one doesn't work for power functions. So I know that's a log. It's a denominator linear. Okay, denominator linear, that's a power function. So what I will do is. Okay, I will rewrite this. That's a bottom is a minus 4x plus 1. Okay, dx. Well, I have the 3 here. 3 outside. Bottom is the gx. I did that. I should have minus 4 to give me a g dash x. I have times a minus 4. I need to divide by a minus 4 as well. So that's 3 over minus 4 times minus 4 over minus 4x plus 1. I know that's a log. Well, I don't need to care about the coefficient, the coefficient outside. And I know this is a log. I know this is a log. So that's a log E. Remember the absolute sign. Okay, the two straight lines. M plus C. M plus C. Okay, that's basically what is antidote. Okay, how to make it from here back to original. Um, the question is, there is not that easy. It needs you to change the form first of all by yourself. For example, that will change to a power of a half. Okay, you change it to a power of a half. As long as the power is not negative one, that's a power function. You use the power function rule. So I want you to use the next 10 minutes and plus tonight to complete all the questions for the next two page, okay, and to H. Okay, tomorrow I will check the answers together with you, but I, don't think it will be helpful I just go through and do all the things for you. I want you to think and then use the rule on the first page to figure out all the answers on the next two pages. Okay, so you have eight minutes now and then if you can't finish, go back home and then finish it. Any questions?
No, okay. That's good.